Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we're going to send three new crew to our lunar station and bring the lunar station crew back. So proper crew rotation around the moon for the first time and hopefully we're going to complete this orbital contract around the moon but we'll have to see about how it takes this whole crew rotation thing. So far there hasn't been a crew rotation contract, I checked. I would really like one, but uh, neither for our low Earth orbit station or for the lunar station do we have a contract for a crew rotation. So that's a little bit sad, but we'll just have to deal with that. Uh, this is not the only thing I would like to do, but we'll see how long it takes and what complications may arise. Lara Kerman, Joan Kerman, and Bill Kerman are going to be off to the moon, and we've got plenty of other lunar payloads that I'm pondering. And, well, I'll just talk about stuff on the way up. So throttle is up, SAS is on, ignition. And launch. We will want to ignite the core engines before these boosters go off. Alright, so I have uh, built a sort of rover for the moon. It's actually the Caribou rover from USI Colonization. Uh, not strictly speaking RP0 compatible, but I assure you that the price is quite expensive and so not... Uh, it's certainly not cheap. Uh, but the downside is, for some reason in all this time we haven't unlocked rover wheels for anything but the Caribou rover. So we can't make a, like an uncrewed rover or a small rover. And the Caribou rover is pretty darn heavy. So it's unfortunate, but that's all we've got. On the bright side, it will allow us to test a new launcher. Uh, same sort of Nico style, but with J2S's. Uh, you'll see it eventually. Perhaps not in this episode, because it takes a long time to build. I think I'm turning this too fast, maybe? Besides that, I took a look at potentially unlocking a Nerva, but the Nerva costs 1.75 million funds to unlock. That's a lot of funds. And it's not like unlimited reuse, it's got 60 ignitions. I don't know how much it costs per unit. I haven't checked the tech tree for that, but I expect it'll be a lot. So, yeah, gotta weigh the benefits and drawbacks of the Nerva, given the cost of it. I wish the engines would, like, cost a lot when you start using it initially, but if, if you use them with a uh, certain frequency or you've used a lot of them, they get cheaper over time which would sort of be more in line with how things work and so they're more expensive when you start and then less expensive later on. But I don't know how uh, to build in that kind of mechanism. We've lost one engine on one of the boosters uh, and we seem to have a little bit of a control issue here. I'm going to ignite the core now. Uh, we, we have a serious control issue. Uh, okay, well, that solves the whole abort problem. Well, that was a surprise. Um, well, just gonna stage until we get to something useful. At some point, well, okay, let me just manually decouple things. Decouple. Okay. Uh, decouple. Okay. Should have had a proper abort thing. But anyway, that was a bit weird. 
I wonder why I lost control with just one engine out. Maybe I was too far away from prograde? Seems strange. Well, um... Uh, that was an expensive sort of situation. Okay, well... Look at all the debris. It's still in uh, render range, I guess. Just, uh... Rain of debris here. Well, we do have uh, backup Orpheus 2 building. That'll take 26 days. But I don't want to just time warp through that. So, maybe we'll do something completely different. Why don't we try and land Valentina on the moon using her tiny little lander and see if that works. And we'll just put off this particular particular mission right now. Alright, well that could have gone worse. Let's recover vessel. Okay, well uh, no experience gain, uh, gain for our crew, but at least they're back. Alright, to the moon. Let's check in on our Kerbals around there. Alright, so here we are, and I guess we will just try this. It's a little bit risky, at least this little vehicle doesn't look like much. But we've got to try it out sometime. And not that this particular episode has started off swimmingly, but yeah. Let's see now... Well, the side facing the Earth, well, it doesn't matter if we maintain communication, Valentina can continue to do her thing anyway. So I guess it's best to just land somewhere where there is light. So we should be in a good location to separate now. I've got it all fully fueled and everything. And Valentina's actually in there. Yep, Valentina's inventory. All right, here we go. Undock. Oof. Okay, forward. Still don't, I still don't have any idea how these advanced Gemini Lander engines were actually supposed to work. Um, hopefully this will be good enough. For the time being, let's get solar panels extended. We probably want to retract those before landing, just in case. Not that we have a whole lot of chance to rescue Valentina. Nine days isn't a lot of time, considering we don't have another lander present. But anyway. I have to say, I'm not uh, overwhelmed by how much power these RCS thrusters have. They are sort of important for landing, keeping our orientation and making sure we're pointing the right way. The Gemini lander engines don't gimbal. Okay, lowering legs. At least that looks like we've got a firm base to stand on. That's nice. That looks like an interesting spot, but we're gonna pass by the northern end of it. I forget if we... Did, did we plant any flags? No, we haven't planted any flags. Do we have the ability to plant flags? I sure hope so. About time we planted a flag around here. Let's try and land in this area down here. I don't have a crude landing contract because the only one in the mission control was one to land at the North Pole. I think we sort of spoiled everything by having the mini probe land at the North Pole. Now the contracts all want everything to do to be done with the North Pole. Gonna try and go a little bit south and maybe we can hit that. We'll see. Uh, the gear is retracted again. Hmm, I hope it doesn't spontaneously retract every now and again. That's not helpful. Well, there's the target right there. 
You can see it now, that's good. Well, trying for a precision landing on the moon here. Hopefully that won't take too much of our Delta V. We do have to get back up. As long as we're next to it is fine. I'm not picky about uh, north-south of it. And once again, the landing gear seems to be retracted. These Gemini lander legs, it occurs to me, are not exactly the best thing. There's something wrong with them. They keep retracting. I think it's like every time I go to the map. Let's see. I go to the map. Let's say I target the station. Sort of an important thing. Yep, every time I go to the map, these landing gear retract. Seems somewhat unsafe, huh? They could be buggy. And of course, they're lander legs, which makes them automatically suspect. I wish this crater was a special crater, but it's just major crater. Hmm. Next version of this vehicle, we may have to just use different landing legs. Even though, in theory, these go with this pod. Oh, coming out of time warp, they retract. Well, now. And of course, we still have that nose cone problem where the nose cone went into the tank. So many issues. But what happens if this the landing legs retract? Oops. When Valentina is on EVA or something. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh no. Oh no. No, 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 no. No. Ah. Uh, okay. Well, at least they're sturdy landing legs for now. That was a pretty bad landing. Okay, well, anyway, extend ladder. We must do the things. Um, crew report here. Uh, okay, apparently useless. EVA. Well, okay for now. Uh, okay, don't do anything silly now. Uh, take surface sample. Really? Not worth any science? Oh, I don't care. Keep it. EV report. Keep it. Apparently we've done this. Plant a flag. I should have gone somewhere else. At least if we plant a flag, we'll remember. Okay, Val. At, uh... I didn't want to remove her helmet. I was just trying to type. I can't believe we don't get science for this. Me neither. Okay, we better launch before I try and go to the map or anything. Um, that's actually behind the ladder. I'm not too sure how this whole ladder thing is working for you. Interesting that she alone, as a Kerbal, has more electric charge than the pod. Okay, now on the ladder. Okay, good. Needed a jump start. Okay, Valentina has boarded. Our relative inclination... Okay, we need to go retrograde, first of all. Remember that. Let me retract the ladder. And I can't go to the map view because otherwise those things might retract. Okay, 
Well, that's not the worst situation I've ever had on the moon, right? Right? Okay, here we go. Well, minor problems aside, like the landing gear and the ladder, they're looking good so far. And of course, no science. And actually, in this configuration, it's looking as it should. It sort of looks like a bug. Very good. Okay, so we did a semi-precision landing, landing in a particular location on the moon. And after making orbit, how much delta V will we have left? Um, well... Looks like about 400. We could probably do a little bit more. Okay. Still very close to the ground, but probably safe. Now one thing to remember with this little lunar excursion vehicle is it can be automated. It's got a controller right there. So, if we need to rescue somebody from the surface of the moon, at least get them back to the station, we can do that, in principle. Also, uh, having been refueled, this same vehicle could transfer back to Earth and then uh, get into low Earth orbit. It has the same amount of delta V for that. It obviously can't descend through the atmosphere or anything. That would be asking too much. Okay, after a mere 5 meter per second correction, we'll have a 0.7 kilometer separation there with a relative speed of about 32 meters per second, which means that our total surplus is more than 300 meters per second. So, that's pretty darn good. Still not enough to, like, go from the station into a polar orbit around the moon and then try and come back, like, you know, our only lunar landing contract would want us to do, but still good. If we did have a station around the moon in polar orbit, that would be fine. Then we could do it. Okay, a 100 meter approach there, something like that. I'll take it. Okay, we have entered the SOI well, not SOI, the render range of the station. I think at this point we should control from here. We're a little bit low on electric charge for some reason, probably didn't turn quite the right way, but we do need to retract solar panels at this point. Okay, closing in. Probably for safety's sake, we'll have to retire this particular version of this vehicle. We'll get something with better landing struts, better nose cones, though that's not a safety issue. And maybe a somewhat better placed uh, ladder. And maybe uh, more powerful solar panels too would be good. But I don't want to, the thing is, eventually it gets to be too heavy, right? We want it to be light so that it can be easily refueled. The lighter it is, the easier it is to refuel it. Okay, we have a dock, it looks like. All right, and Valentina is safe, thankfully. Uh, so, all is well here. I guess we need to try and transfer a crew over here again. I'm sure our crew that just had the abort will be thrilled to go again. Actually, they will be. Well, let's try it out. Okay, let's try this again, and hopefully a bit more attentively this time, carefully. And staging is fine, throttle is up, and we're lined up. Okay, ignition.
What a delay. Alright. That gives me confidence physics is working, right? Off we go. We're going to turn a little bit slower this time. The crew does look nervous, I have to say. Not the most confident Kerbal crew I've ever seen. Really, the Olympus rocket should be quite safe. Really. Okay, let's ignite the center engines. I think it's a good time. And we can also throttle down. Alright, booster separation. And throttle up. Well, no problems with the boosters this time. Ah, uh, still haven't fixed the staging. Alright, launch escape system off. Just in time for the world to go away. I, I really need to fix that about uh, RSS visual enhancements in this install. It's just this install. I fixed it all in all the other KSP 1.1.3 ones, but I keep forgetting to do it here. Alright, getting ready for the end of this stage with no mishap so far. Alright, separation. And ignition. ignition is good. We continue on our way to orbit. Okay, we are about to make orbit here. And shut down 288 by 220 and let us plot a transfer to the moon. Okay, we're going to go for a good lunar periapsis with sort of a loose free return sort of situation. And let's see though, we need to work on how we line up with the station. Um, hopefully that's the station's orbit. Okay, well that's not too bad, right? eight point four degrees we've had worse we've had worse alright getting ready for translunar injection these little RCS thrusters don't exactly have a lot of oomph to them but that's alright we may be patient alright let's double check very stable and ignition And the J2 is relit, and we are on our way. Okay, preparing for shutdown. Uh, burn was nominal, and shutdown. And let's take a look. Uh, we could do with a little bit more on the burn, so just RCS it. Okay, so we can get rid of that maneuver node. We have a tangency point there. And let's say we plot a maneuver right now. Actually, you know what, let's separate from the from the J2 stage. Okay, that should be nominal. Okay. And let's extend our solar panels. Now I'll I will plot what we may need to do. 
Okay, we've got an initial burn plotted to make orbit around the moon. Let's set an alarm because I think I'll leave it here for now. We'll rendezvous this next time and try and fulfill that contract. We did make a lunar landing this time with a Kerbal, though that system needs some more work and I'll spend some time to do that. We also have some things queued up. So let's just review. We've got uh, the Mars class vessel transfer stage and so we're looking at in 142 days to transfer that Mars class vessel that we've already built using that stage to Mars. We've also already built the Ganymede lander to back up for our existing Ganymede lander and we will be launching that in 71 days. Possibly that's something that we're going to be doing next time. And we've also got this moon trucker, which of course is the USI colonization caribou. And I'll show that to you next time. And we'll be launching that. Well, it's 113 days to build, so it'll be a while. But anyway, uh, with this, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.